This Let's Edit with Media Composer tutorial is brought to you by VideoGuys.com, the leading reseller of video editing and production equipment for more than 25 years. And by Boris FX, a leading developer of visual effects, titling, video editing, and workflow tools and plugins for broadcast, post-production, and film professionals. And by Rampant Design Tools, creators of QuickTime-based style effects for video and designed to significantly enhance content for editors, visual effects artists, and motion graphic designers. Hey everyone, Kevin P. McAuliffe here and I am back again with another Let's Edit with Avid Media Composer tutorial and in this lesson I want to get in and talk specifically about the new Source Browser feature inside of Media Composer because I think it's a fantastic tool, not just because it's one that we're eventually going to have no choice but to use, but also because it comes in exceptionally handy when you're working with a particular type of element especially ones created by our good friends at Rampant Design Tools. Their style elements work perfectly with the source browser, not only from a standpoint of being able to preview them very easily, but also get in and organize them very easily as well. And in this lesson, I'm going to show you how we can do both and give you some great insight on this fantastic new tool. Now before we go on, I want to remind you that these tutorials are designed to get in and take a very in-depth look at very specific aspects of editing inside of Avid Media Composer. But sometimes you just need to get the information and get yourself up and running lightning fast. Well if that's the case, head on over and check out my Mac Pro Video training series on Media Composer where lesson one will get you up and running in Media Composer in about an hour. Okay, so let's command and tab into Avid Media Composer, obviously Alt and Tab for all my Windows friends out there, and I have a bin, and I'm just going to call this bin Source Browser, and you're going to see why in just a second. What I'm also going to do here is I'm just going to open another bin here, I'll just open the Clips bin, and I'm just going to move it down below my Source Browser bin. Okay, so let's right click, and now I alluded in the intro to the fact that eventually we're not going to have a choice as to whether we want to work with the source browser or not because you'll see right now if I come to the input command if you're working in a version of Media Composer pre version 8.6 you won't see the source browser what you're going to see is import media and link to media now until all of the issues with the source browser have been worked out we still have the option to import media so keep that in mind now what's important to keep in mind is get comfortable working inside of the source browser because you do have the ability to either import or link to right from that window. What I'm going to do is navigate to the source browser and you'll see it now appears and it's going to remember the last folder that I was in, which in this case is some footage of some break dancing and some other sort of club style dancing shots. Okay. Now, one thing I want to point out before I get going is I have the source browser up right now and if at any time I decided that I wanted to start editing, I don't need to close the source browser to do that. I could simply navigate over to any clip that I want to see and just start working with it. So this is actually very handy. I mean, I am in a single monitor uh, environment here, but if you happen to be working in a double monitor environment or even just a widescreen monitor environment, you could take the source browser and really put it wherever you want and keep it up and keep it active all of the time. Now, the source browser is essentially broken down into three main areas. We have the top, where we have some commands. We also have the navigation options up at the top. We also have navigation down at the side, but this is more so where we're going to get in and preview our footage and also get in and search for footage as well. Now, I'm going to get really specific on that in just a second. Now, down at the bottom is where we have the specific commands of linking to and importing the settings that come with that and how we want the source browser to behave once we've brought media in. Now I want to start right up at the top talking a little bit about navigation. Now of course at any point we can navigate to a clip and I'm going to come back basically to the main root of everything. You'll see that I'm sort of in dancing. I could even, you know, if I had a subfolder in dancing I could twirl that down. But what I want to do is just collapse everything, get right back to the beginning just like it was fresh, like I'd loaded it for the first time. To do that, all we have to do is navigate to the top bar right here to the Collapse All Directories function. As soon as I click that, everything's going to just bring itself right back up. So we're right back to where we started. I can see the hard drives, including my local one and any external drives that I might happen to have attached. Now, also along the top, we have some basic navigation functions, the ability to move forward and move back based on where I am inside of my hard drive and inside of my folders. We have the ability to jump right back to the home directory 
we can collapse all directories and we can add favorites. Now I'm not going to talk specifically about favorites right now because I got a great tip and technique for you guys to use coming up in just a little bit. Now I want to get back to that dancing folder. So what I'm going to do is just navigate onto my G Speed Studio Rate. I'm going to twirl that down. I'm going to come to my dancing footage here. And once I select it, you'll now see that I have the thumbnails of all of the clips that are in this bin. Now, if you're like me, and in many cases, you don't like to work with thumbnails when you're working with specific types of clips, like for example, if I've rendered out clips from After Effects, I really don't need to see a thumbnail preview of them because I know specifically what clip I'm going for. I can always switch back to list view right down here at the bottom. Now it's referred to as text view. I call it list view because I'm accustomed to calling it that inside of my bin. Now, much like inside of any folder on your system, you can get in and sift by alphabetical order. You can get in and sift by size, lowest to highest, date modified, etc., etc. All fairly straightforward. Now, what I'm going to do is navigate right back down to the bottom to thumbnail view because these thumbnails are a little bit small. And we do have the ability to get in and increase the size of them to get a really good preview of a clip that we might want to import. So, what I'm going to do is just grab the slider and just start dragging to make these thumbnails bigger. Now, if I didn't want to just be dragging back and forth, what I can always do is just navigate right back and I can just navigate right over here to the right of the slide bar. And what that's going to do is it's going to increase the size of the thumbnails by one step every time that I click on it. Now, what I also have the ability to do is to do that in reverse. Now, in most cases for me, I like to have the thumbnails as big as they can possibly be just so I can get a good idea of what's going on with these clips. And what's very cool is I have the ability to not only play these clips, but if I take the mouse and I navigate up to one of these clips, let's use spinning around as an example. If I select that clip and I just drag the mouse to the right or to the left, I'll get a preview of that clip with its speed based on how quickly I drag the mouse. Now, if at any point I'd like to see this clip playing to get an idea of what exactly is going on with it, as opposed to seeing it in fast forward or in slow-mo, I can simply hit the play key, which for me is the L key on the keyboard, and I can get a real-time preview of what this clip is going to do. Now, on the flip side, I can use the J key to play this clip backwards, which is also very handy to have. Okay, now, if this is the clip that I'd like to get and bring into a project, we obviously have one of two ways that we can do this. We can link to the clip, or we can import the clip directly. Now, by default, the source browser is set to link to. Now, if I needed to get in and check out my settings for my link to, in most cases you think, well, you gotta come over to your settings, you gotta find it. No, you don't have to do any of that. Right down here beside the link option, you'll notice we have a little gear icon. If I click on that, it's going to bring up the link settings directly. So you don't need to worry about going over to your you know, project window, going into settings and finding the link settings. The same works if we were to select import. I can simply click on the little gear icon and we're now brought to the import settings. I'm just gonna cancel out of that. I'll just go back to link here. Now you're gonna notice that I'm told over here, if I double click, it's going to load the clip into the source monitor or link or import the clip. Now in most cases, depending on how you wanna work, you don't even actually need to, if you're going to be using the link to method, to link any of these clips into your bin when you're previewing them. I'm just gonna shrink the window down here a little bit. If I needed to check out this alternate turns A clip, I'm just gonna double click on it to call it up into the preview window. I can play this without actually bringing it into my project. Nah, you know what, this isn't the clip that I want. Let me come to floored everyone. I'm just gonna double click on that, hit play. And if I decided that I wanna have this in my project, if I come back and just mark an in and out point and I hit B on the keyboard, You'll see I'm asked which bin I wanna put this in. I'm gonna put it in the source browser bin. I'm just gonna say, okay. And now what we have is the untitled sequence and the floored everyone link to clip in that bin. Now, you may have noticed that as soon as I hit the edit key on the keyboard, that floored everyone link to clip had already appeared. Now, how did it know where I wanted to send this clip to? Well, if you take a look down in the lower right hand corner, the target bin for any clip or clips that I'm going to be bringing in is going to go to that source browser bin. Now we can obviously change that to whatever bin we want or even a new bin by simply choosing that in the dropdown. Now we do have a couple other options down here inside of our source browser settings down at the bottom of the screen. 
The first one being that we have the ability to close the source browser after we link or import a clip or clips, and we can even clear the source monitor upon closing the source browser. Now by default, the clear source monitor upon closing the source browser is selected, which I'm fine with. But we could obviously check those or deselect them if we wanted to. Now something else cool that I wanted to point out is that if you had a bin that had a whole ton of clips in it, you know, this bin has a few clips in it, and you wanted to get in and find a clip or clips quickly, you can come over to the search window and type in, let's just type in hand. And as soon as I type that in, you'll see now that everything's been removed except for any clip that has the word hand in the name of it, which in this case is hand on ground and on one hand. Now we talked about the link settings. The import settings work very similar to the link settings. You'll notice that nothing has changed as far as double clicking or what's going to happen when we close the source browser. But what has changed now is that once we have import selected, we now have resolutions and a drive option for us to choose from before we click on import to import any clip into our bin. Now again, this is all based strictly on your workflow and in most cases I recommend you're gonna link to all your clips and then you're gonna either consolidate or transcode them based on whether you are using Avid friendly media like Apple ProRes or whether you need to get in and actually transcode media like H.264 so that you have it as native Avid media so that you don't run into any problems down the road. I always see people posting in the Avid editors of Facebook, oh, I'm having this problem with my project, it's two hours long and it's all linked to media. You should never work like that. Linking to media was only ever really designed to get media into Media Composer so you can transcode it and then work with those native Avid media files for an absolutely smooth workflow. Now, that's really the nuts and bolts of the source browser, but I wanna circle back and I wanna talk about one of my favorite features of the source browser. Well, it's actually two of my favorite features in the source browser. It's the ability to get in and add favorites and it's the fact that we have these thumbnails here. Now, like I said before, in many cases, based on what I'm doing, I don't really use thumbnail view, but one place that I totally use it is when I'm working with style elements like the ones from Rampant Design Tools. Now, what I'm gonna do is just hide Media Composer for a second. I'm gonna to come to my external hard drive. I'm gonna come down to my Rampant Design Tools folder. Now, this might be some people's experience with Rampant Design Tools elements. They make a purchase, whether it's the fantastic new Edit Essentials that I highly recommend that all editors check out. You can't go wrong for $59 for about 200 elements for you to work with inside a Media Composer or whether it's a full product like, for example, let's use the Rampant Flares Preview as an example. You've just made a purchase, you've downloaded the product, and what's gonna happen is you're going to take a look inside the folder and there's gonna be a ton of QuickTime elements in there for you to go through and try to figure out which one is gonna work perfectly with the piece that you're working on. Now, in the past, we'd be given a PDF file that shows us what all of these lens flares are. But it's really hard to gauge how good these elements are and how great they look by taking a look at them on a PDF. And to be honest, you don't really have time to import each one of these elements and go through them one at a time. Ah, that's where the power of the source browser comes into play. And this is why the source browser is going to be such an integral part of your workflow, especially when you're gonna be doing effects work inside a Media Composer. Let me show you what I mean. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to command and tab back into Media Composer. Let me just close this folder right here. And I already have a clip in my timeline that I'm gonna to wanna to add an element to. And I think I'm just gonna take the whole clip here. And I'm gonna add a lens flare to this. The only problem is, is that I don't know what lens flare element from Rampant Design Tools that I want to use with this clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come to the source browser. I'm going to navigate down to those rampant design tools elements here. Let's come down. You'll see there's the folder already twirled down. Let's come down to, let's come down to our studio flares. And of course, at any time, if I want to see what one of these elements does, all I have to do is simply select it. I can now drag either right or left, or I can hit the space bar to get a real time preview. And let's find one. I think I'm just going to drag down a little bit here. Now you'll see how quickly these elements will populate themselves inside of the source browser. Super, super quick, which is very handy. Now I think I want to grab one down around the hundreds. I saw kind of a cool one inside of that PDF file. And there it is right there, 93. I like my effects to be subtle and then come in a little bit here. There we go. Very cool. 
So what we're going to do is I'm going to switch over to link. I'm just going to say link into the source browser folder just like such. I can now close the source browser. We're going to come back to it in just a second here. I can now take this clip. I'm going to drop it onto video track two. Now what's important to keep in mind is to get the most out of these elements. We're going to use a great effect from another one of our partner companies, Boris Effects. I'm going to come to the key and blend section. I'm going to choose the composite effect. I'm going to choose an additive transfer mode right here by stepping into effects mode. We're going to switch the apply mode from hard light to additive. There we go. And there's the lens flare lighten things up. Very cool. So you can see the source browser is fantastic for getting in and previewing these elements. But one thing that I like to have is I like to have them at my fingertips at all times. Let me show you how you can set that up. What I'm going to do is just right click, come back to the source browser. And what I'm going to start doing is that with these elements or with these folders, I'm going to come in and start making them favorites because I want to have quick access to them. Now I could do this with every one of my rampant design tools elements. I'm just going to choose the first, you know, five or six of them here. There we go. And what's now going to happen is, is that anytime I come in, let's just say I have a producer say to me, Kev, you know, show me some of the great elements that you might have that we can add to this shot to take it to the next level. Oh, no problem, Mr. or Miss producer slash director. I'm just going to right click and I'm going to come to the source browser. I'm going to come up to the favorites tab. And once I select it, I'll now have quick access to any one of these folders that has these rampant design tools elements in them. So I can quickly jump in and say, oh, you'd like to see some film burns? No problem. Here they are. Oh, you'd like to see some designer overlays? No problem. Here those are as well. Oh, you'd like to see some film flash effects? No problem. Here they all are right here. And of course, using the rampant design tools elements in conjunction with that BCC composite effect, we'll have these looking exactly the way that they do in a compositing application at the snap of a finger. Now, as we're wrapping up, I want to remind you that if you're looking for great deals on Avid Media Composer software licenses, subscriptions, and upgrades, use coupon code MC101 for 5% off any purchase at videoguys.com. MC101 is going to be a coupon code that you're going to love because the great team at Boris Effects is offering a 10% discount on BCC10 AVX or multi-host licenses, full or upgrades, again using the coupon code MC101. And finally, Rampant Design Tools is offering 25% off any non-discounted product they offer in their library, again, you guessed it, by using coupon code MC101. And finally, don't forget that if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you have any tutorial requests, you can send them to me at kevinpmcauliffe at gmail.com. This has been Kevin P. McAuliffe. Thanks a lot for watching.